We are back! We have the loser semifinals! Loser's bracket in general! Back with the lobster roll week one series week one. I'm your host, or main your host, Dominic Rashad Fury, whichever you prefer, which I realize I hadn't introduced myself yet. So for the previous games, you didn't know who I was. I was just a weird voice. Anyhow, so yeah, we're in the loser semis. And for those of you not familiar with the series, it is a weekly series that is starting this week. And it is going to be going on for, I believe, 10 weeks. And that's that's the thing. That's really cool. I like it. I'm glad there's a weekly series tournament for Zero K, because those are always kind of neat. Speaking of someone who was playing in a weekly series tournament for other games, that's... Yeah, it's, it's good to have that. It's a great way to keep people invested. Anyway, we are going to have Google Frog and Loa on Cobalt Dream. And I... Well, I'm curious to see how Bloa does, because they they won their last game against Ted McFriend. Apparently, we're... Because we saw him against Randy getting completely blown up, but then they went against Ted McFred and apparently learned how to expand. So I'm really excited to see what they managed to pull off with that. Google Frog, on the other hand, well-known, quite strong player. Like, they are, and also, you know, main developer. So they are... I'm expecting they are going to have an easier time here, but I'm really curious what Bloa has learned as far as expansion goes. Already sending the conjure. Oh, this is interesting. Send them over to the edge of the map already. I'm. I suppose you keep an eye on that. For now, though, it's two conjurers and the commander doing their thing. I'm expecting the second conjurer is going to go around the back, deal with all these metal extractors before pulling up. Like, go along here. But I'm not sure. Loa is indeed doing exactly that. Okay, that makes sense. Then the commander goes at the front, the other conjurer goes off to the side. Yeah, that that's a very sensible expansion pattern. So yeah, Bloa definitely learned from their replays. Like, they learned from Randy. So that's, that's great. I mean, that level of adaptation in a tournament is actually quite impressive. I'm not, like, I am really very serious right now. I mean, it'll be curious to see what they do as a response for Google Frog, because one thing that I noticed in their match against Randy is that they weren't sure what to do in situations where their opponent's unit composition was a surprise, like a locust nest, a locust nat rush. But even then, it's like, what do you do to respond to your opponent? How quickly do you respond? How quickly do you respond to their positioning, to their composition, to their expansion patterns, I guess? So far, though, Google Frog and Bloa are about even. Google Frog with actually. Medium priority in the factory. Both both medium priority in the factory. I general I mean the general recommendation is to leave your factory at low priority to prioritize economy, which Google Frog isn't doing, actually. They're not using priority at all, which is surprising. Oh. Oh I see. Ooh. Okay, Bloa. If you're watching this, I see there's a bit of a confusion. So if you want construction priority to be high, use this. Although I think, unless... Can I? No, weird. Okay. But yeah, construction priority should be the one you focus on, not miss priority. Although I think miss priority might be automatically up. Sorry, never mind. I just realized that's the default. There. Ah, right, because you want the area cloak to be given power. Okay, I feel silly. Actually, no, I stand by that. Set your constructors to high priority. That's also a good way of doing it. Either factor low priority or constructors high priority. Miscellaneous priority is irrelevant in this case, but... Yeah, I don't know why I felt the need to lay that out, because if you read the thing, it's kind of obvious. But then again, there's a lot. You can get distracted. Things can get confusing just because there are a lot of buttons on the side, and similar ones can get... You can get mixed up between them. Anyway, Reaver Lotus coming here as the defense against the Scorchers. Only one Metal Extractor lost so far, although more importantly, I think... No! No Constructors yet lost! Might not last, though. This Conjurer in a really risky position, but... Bloa, they are actually not doing so bad. They, uh, I'm a little concerned about that one Constructor over in the corner, though. I mean, the Reaver able to stop it, and Google Frog has not seen it yet. No, they don't... 
I mean, they might know where the constructor is. They probably realize, oh, there must be a constructor here. There's metal extractors being built. But no, going instead for the one over to the south, and that is going to be a blow. A massive blow. The southeast, or northwest rather, is... I don't want to say south. It's north. The northwest, northeast is going to be very difficult to retake. Although Google Frog not actually taking out the rest of the metal extractors, so that's that's at least a bit of a relief for Bloa. They're not losing as much of their economy. Unfortunately, playing Cloakie on a flat, wide open map is a difficult proposition unless you're going Mass Glaive, which, as you can see, Bloa is not. Also, kind of difficult unless you move your Conjurer back and make sure it cloaks and avoids fire. That's the one thing for playing Cloakie is that you have to be careful. You have to kind of be sneaky. Especially with the work or the constructor with the conjurers. They've got to be. They have their cloak. And if they're threatened, you want to stop them building, move them away, and then try to walk them away in a way that your opponent isn't likely to follow so that they can escape. Because the most important thing is to keep your constructors alive. If they're alive, then you can rebuild. So even a raid like this isn't that devastating. In fact, Bloa already reclaiming quite a bit. Already reclaiming quite a bit. So they're doing pretty well, all things considered. And the only problem right now is a lack of energy. Actually, if they had if they had the energy, they could very easily be turning the tables right now as far as unit production goes. Their attrition's about equal. They have the type counter, at least for defensive purposes, for the Scorchers. And actually putting a bit of pressure back onto Google Frog. So right now Google Frog is having a very difficult time raiding beyond the periphery. Unfortunately, the periphery is a lot of a blow ahead. That being said, they are getting their energy back up, so they won't be accessing as much in the future. And yeah, that's actually a really strong position for Bloa to be in. Unfortunately, it is still a position that's very static. So it's a strong position if Google Frog chooses to engage it, but Google Frog can avoid it fairly effectively, at least for now. And Bloa's, I mean, they're setting out a periphery here with with reavers to try to stop any incoming scorchers but unfortunately some scorchers got through and now that's another conjurer that's down that's three so far reaver comes back that's less than ideal wait holding back units oh yeah and you're pointing out that the reavers are there yeah that's for defense these are basically stardusts with legs that's kind of what they're for right now a more thing, the thing I'm more worried about is the fact that all these Reavers are back here. The fact that the Reavers are not, didn't immediately, as soon as they killed the Scorchers, start moving back up front. To that end, what radar does... Oh yeah, they got a reason, reasonable amount of radar. For their territory and what they can safely build radar in, that makes sense. But yeah, the Reavers should have been shift queued after killing, like, target, target the Scorchers, and then queue them to move up immediately to defend. Because if you're trying to do a perimeter defense then you need to actually make sure the perimeter is defended. And unfortunately, these Reavers are being held back. So I, I, I agree with Anir in principle, but I don't agree that those that these particular Reavers were the problem. I think it was the ones that went to defend. They got stuck farther back. And now Google Frog, I mean, despite some strong initial resist resistance from Bloa, Google Frog basically has this in the bag. Unfortunately, I think... Where? No, uh, yeah, I'm thinking about this now. Bloa really needed another radar. Maybe over here or something. Maybe a couple, one on this ridge, one over here, maybe one in the back as well. Like, unfortunately... Oh, those Reavers just get overwhelmed? Looks like they did. But yeah, unfortunately, when you're doing a heavy defensive strategy with riot units like this, especially on a map, on a flat map where your opponent's going for a fast factory, or just in general on a flat map, or just in general defensive strategy, you need radar. Like, that is the key thing. If you don't have radar, like, this is not enough radar. You would need to have, like, pretty much at least two-thirds of the map covered in radar. Which, like I said, radar here, maybe radar over here, some backup radar in case they got killed. If you have that, then you know where to place your reavers. But you have to be paying attention and half predicting and half scouting with the, ra with the radar where your opponent is actually moving their forces so you can intercept them. That's... Like, that's the really hard part of fighting raiders with riots. And especially a flat map where your opponent has gone for light via for rovers, because rovers have a massive speed advantage. But still, I gotta, I gotta commend Bloa. They expanded quite quickly. They 
did a reasonably good job of keeping their cool as the scores were coming in. And while there was a lot to pay attention to, they weren't... They seemed like they were able to keep up with it relatively well. It was just they kind of put themselves in a position where they didn't quite play that the game they were trying to play as well as they could have because of lack of radar. But they still played what they did well enough. I mean, Google Frog is an extremely strong player, and Bloa is clearly quite new, although clearly quite keen. So I'm really excited to see where how they develop and grow, and especially if this weekly series is something that they continue to participate in, seeing them grow from that will be really exciting. But that was that, and we are going to get a rematch now of Randy and Google Frog. That will be... That'll be it. So with that... We are going to be moving on with Randy and Google Frog. Just seeing who's going to stay in the tournament and who isn't. Because right now it is looking like... What? It's sick. Anyway, so it's looking like there is going to be a pretty interesting rematch going forward. So we'll have that, and then we will have the grand finals to close it off. So stay tuned. <laughs>